Hi, I'm Rosanna from Warrior Crochet and today I'm going to be sharing with you all my updates from March. Hi and welcome to March's update. I'm Rosanna from Warrior Crochet and today I'm going to be sharing with you all the updates and all the projects I've been working on the last month. And honestly, March has been a really really busy month it wasn't until i got everything out now that i realized just how much crochet i've been doing okay so let's get started with the first thing now i've got everything in reach um so earlier in march i was watching some um podcasts from a company called botanical yarns in england and it's a little yarn company that makes indie yarns from yorkshire and I love watching their podcasts because it gives me a taste of home and they make me giggle and there's lots of things that are regional close to my area that I can connect to, which maybe many people don't. So I was watching their, um, their podcast and they said something that I've never heard of and it was called a... Um, emotional support chicken well this just tickled me because i've never heard of this expression and as some of you may know i have my own chickens and i love them dearly and they give me a giggle they are funny um they're part of the family and the thought of having and having a emotional support chicken just tickled me so i had to make one so I went online and tried to look for these patterns and there are um, a few patterns available, a few in knit and a few in crochet but there wasn't something that I was looking for. It was either too cutesy or too detailed. I wanted something in between. And last year I had made um, four tiny, tiny little um crochet chickens to represent my four chickens, which are Lizzie, Lucy, Ero, and Sophie, named after friends from the family. Um, so I decided to do a modification to the original pattern that I had found for these chickens, um, because I wanted this chicken to be bigger, because these emotional support chickens were a proper teddy, and it I decided I need one of these. So I got busy. And over a weekend, I got all my yarns out, laid them all out, and decided how can I make this chicken using that pattern. So I made a few modifications to make it bigger and also use a doubled or tripled my yarn um, and obviously used a big crochet hook. So this. <laughs> This just tickles me so much. Um, this is Lucy, my emotional support chicken. I hope you can see her. Try and get that in the picture. And I've used the scrap yarns that I had um, in my box, in my yarn box. And I happen to have some um, doll's eyes, which I bought last year to make... Um, a knit, knitted frog for my daughter so I hope you can see her but this just gave me such a giggle and as soon as I made it obviously my daughter went mom mom can I have it so we now have an emotional support chicken in our house um, because obviously the real ones are not allowed in although they do sneak in um, so this is Lucy our little house chicken so that was just something that gave me a giggle and I just I just had to stop everything and make. So this was my little fun make, which took me about an hour, and that's two hours max. I'm quite quick at crochet, so there she is. So she now lives with Pod in her room. So that was one of my first makes of the month. Now, like I said, this month has been crazy busy with crochet um i didn't realize i'd actually done so much <laughs> and this month i have been working on some 
crochet placemats. Now, as many of you know, I said this year is all going to be about flowers, and flowers for me also cover into foliage. So I created a set of crochet placemats. Please forgive the dogs. They like to sing. Um, I created a set of crochet placemats which are inspired by foliage. Now this was actually a design I have made for a magazine um, pattern call out. And I'd sent off my idea and it didn't get through and then the, the sample and the idea just got left in the box um, for a future day. And this year I finally had the time to bring this pattern to life. So I'm going to throw some videos in now. fun doing this photo shoot it was it was nice to set it up I spent the whole afternoon setting out the table getting the flowers and then taking videos and photos for these patterns so as you can see from the photos there are four different um, there are four different foliage designs including eucalyptus bay leaf rosemary and finally the last one is an olive branch and the idea was that this the the foliage would frame the plate now this could be either on the side at the top on the other side the bottom the position is totally up to you but i wanted to create something completely different very rustic um, and something you could use for alfresco dining or even inside. So I'm going to show you now the placemats here. So I've made mine from a cotton. This was a very old cotton I had. Um, my godmother actually got me a big batch of this um, traditional cotton yarn on eBay. I had like 20 balls of them. Um, so I made these placemats. So here is the olive branch. Now, as you can see, the video is not picking these up so well, hence me throwing in the videos that I have made. And then this one is the bay leaf, which looks really, really nice. It's very strong. Next, we have got eucalyptus. There we go. And finally, here is the rosemary. And now these patterns have all been tested now and they are now available to buy as a set or the individual patterns, depending if you just want eucalyptus, you can buy just that. And they are all for sale now on my Etsy, Ravelry and my website. So this is a new pattern this month. I think the diameter I've made this is 38 um, centimeters diameter, but you can change that to your modifications. Some of my crochet tested testers added a few extra rows and added some um, additional detailing, which I looked really beautiful. And some actually decided just to use them as a central placemat instead of using as individual um, placemats for the di uh, dinner table. 
So these are the new pattern that I have just released. I hope you like them. And I'll put a link down below to all of these patterns for you. So like I said, this has been a busy month and I actually got managed to get two pieces made for our house for spring decor. Even though in actual fact, we are going, we have just gone into autumn, hence the use of a jumper. Um, but a lot of you uh, who are subscribers are in the Northern Hemisphere. So I try and cover mainly for the Northern Hemisphere than for the Southern. So here is my crochet daffodil question that I made. And this was made from in this month's free crochet pattern. And like I said, I'm concentrating on flowers this year. And this was the free crochet daffodil granny square pattern. And I have made nine daffodils. And as you can see, they're a bit 3D. Well, they are 3D and they come out. I have a little pop. Can you hear the birds? Um, um, so this was made at the beginning of March and then I crocheted all the granny squares together. And then I wanted to add a little bit of detail to the back. So I made a little crochet button <laughs> to go on the back in the same gold yarn so that it can just open and close to put in the filling and then I have added a little peacock edging along the back there. So this is our crochet daffodil pillow which is comfortably sitting on my husband's chair at the moment hence why some of the daffodils are a bit flat. So this was the first cushion I made and I also made a second because it's March, it's the month of lots of events and it was the month of St. Patrick's. So I also released another pattern this month. So this month I actually released two and I'll put links down below. And the second one was a crochet shamrock, otherwise known as a crochet clover. And I had seen the most gorgeous, gorgeous embroidered pillow with lots of different shamrocks from a company called Alice in Scandiland and I bought quite a few of her things and brought them back to Brazil for our rustic kitchen and I fell in love with these beautiful beautiful pillows but I won't be going back to England till the end of the year so I thought I'll make my own. Now obviously mine are not embroidered and I happen to have some um, neutral, neutral linen fabric, just the right amount in my sewing sash. So I threw up just a simple envelope pillow. And then I made lots of different motifs here in all the different green yarns that I had and made this pillow. And it's really nice because because they're all different weight yarns, you've got those different textures and I carefully sewed each one of them on into a little angle so it looks like they're floating a little bit. Um, and then on the back, again, I added a little addition of detail of just two little motifs. So if you would like this pattern, again, I'll put a link down below for this crochet motif pattern. So that was the second thing I've made for our home this month. So I was on quite a roll. So I've made placemats, I've made cushions, I've made the emotional support, <laughs> um, chicken. Um, let me see what else is on my list. And this month, well this weekend, is Easter and I had sent my um, crochet yarn bomb box back to my parents and they have now got the the bunnies and the little excuse me the little eggs all on the post bags and I'm going to throw in a little video now for you to see 
Also this week, my mum sent me the most lovely little picture, and I'm going to try and throw this in now as well, that somebody actually made an addition to our yarn post box, which was really, really sweet. And they've put on a little worry worm. I don't know if they've made this or if they bought it and added it on. But it's really nice because it feels like the community are enjoying this yarn bomb and they're even adding to it. So that was a really nice surprise to get this week. Um, and it's nice to be part of my home community even when I'm on the other side of the world. So that's our Easter yarn bomb. Okay, now as I've said, it's been a busy month and it's just turned autumn. And this year I wanted, I want to do much more crochet than I've ever done in any other years. And last year I did a lot of knitting um, because I didn't actually own a pair of socks. Before we moved here to um, the interior of Sao Paulo, we actually lived in Santos, which is extremely hot and tropical, so I never had a need for socks. So last year and the year before, I spent the year learning how to knit socks. And I still had one or two skeins left, which I haven't used. And I decided this year that I'm going to crochet a pair of socks because I've always been on the fence with crochet socks. To me, in theory, I don't think they would work because crochet is made with knots, not woven. So I was very unsure whether this is going to work. But I thought, no, let's bite the bullet. Let's try it. So this year I bought a pattern. Um, I'm not sure who by off the top of my head, but it was a beautiful pattern that looks like knit. And it was a very, very clever construction. Now, I have not actually started this pattern. I made the big boo-boo, which I shouldn't make, in that I didn't read the pattern thoroughly before I started. So I just assumed, and you know the saying with assume, um, that the swatch will be really easy to make. It'd just be a standard swatch. So I made the first swatch. I was like, this is very, very big. I'm going to have to go down in size a lot from the crochet hook that they, they described. So then I went down from the 3 mil to a 2 mil, And then the swatch was working. Then I decided I'm actually going to read the pattern. And I made a big boo-boo because the swatch wasn't a standard stitch. The swatch was of the stitch pattern which has been made for this sock. So, third time's charm. Third time's charm did not go. Third time's the charm was way too big. So then I had to do it again and I switched from the original pattern which was a 3 mil down to a 2.5. And I finally got the swatch right. And here is the swatch. And I have used some actual sock yarn, which has got a little bit of um, nylon in there. And I bought this yarn here from Loops of London two years ago. So I'm really embarrassed that I've had this for two years and I've not done anything. So this will be the year, well, this month, will be the month that I'm going to use this and try this sock pattern. So I finally got the swatch right and it's a very, very stretchy. It was actually a pattern like no other I've seen before. The pattern instructions are so detailed. I've never seen sock pattern instructions so detailed, informative and so long. So I will be starting these crochet socks this month and I will let you know how it goes. If any of you have made cro crochet socks, please leave me a comment below and tell me your experiences. Would you recommend it? How did they fit? Because this is all an experiment to me. 
Um, so now the weather's, weather's gone a bit cooler, I'm hoping I'm going to have a bit more time to work on this whip. So this is one project which is just for me, which is in progress. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you about is that I have listened to all your comments from January when I asked you what three patterns would you like? And I got a few requests and one of the requests was dogwood flower, which I didn't know, which I am working on now baby's breath and orange blossoms. So I'm work currently working now on next month's free crochet pattern. And actually I'm not gonna release just one, I'm gonna release two. So the pattern I'm working on, which is just here, is the dogwood pattern. And I, I didn't actually know what a dogwood tree was and I did some research and it is the most beautiful beautiful tree with these beautiful white blossoms um, so I it was a pleasure to see this tree and to actually be asked to create a pattern for it so here is my sample I don't think you're gonna see this very well it's a tiny little white flower and this is what I'm going to be filming today for the free pattern. And it's got a little green center, four leaves, and I'm also going to film the leaf to go with it. So this will be next month's free pattern. So this month I am also going to be releasing a second video. Now this, I'm not normally <laughs> releasing two free videos a month. It's just, you've got me on a roll at the moment and the second video I'm gonna be releasing is one of the patterns I get asked so many times for and that is my crochet hydrangea leaf. Now you can actually get this pattern free when you subscribe, but I think a lot of people get confused because the link actually says crochet rose leaf and hydrangea leaf they don't realize it's both together so what i will do is i'm going to actually make a full free video which you don't have to subscribe to anymore and this is my original hydrangea she's a little bit squished at the moment i've just got her out the box um but those are the leaves that i'm going to be making the step-by-step -step pattern for so this will be released and as you can see it is the same as the rose rose leaf i know it's not that easy to see from here it is the same pattern but just different yarn um, i've used a sorry sorry um silk yarn for this one and this one has been made with a cotton so that will be the second free pattern. And finally, I also got a request for baby's breath and I have made it. I, I have so many things on my list. It is coming, but this is the sample I've been working on. It was so difficult to actually find a way that I could make this into something so delicate. And the only way I found this was to use an actual um, twig. So to find the right twig took me a while because I needed something very delicate with a lot of branches which could hold my crochet. So this is one in progress and I don't think this will be released until um, May. Um, but bear with me, it is coming. So I am listening to your um, comments. I do take them on board. I just need a little bit of time, okay? So they will come. Like I said, if you have any other crochet flowers which you would like to see this year, leave me a comment down below. Okay guys, I'm gonna bring this video to an end. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up because it does help the algorithm and help YouTube boost me that little bit more on this platform. 
And so I'm going to close now and I'm going to love you and leave you. Wish you have a lovely day, a lovely weekend, a lovely Easter. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.